Hi everyone, Jim Doyle here. So as you can tell, we're just a few minutes away from our program starting and no ties even yet, but thanks for joining us. Before we formally get started, I wanted to share with you some quick thoughts. We've done a whole bunch of these conferences over the last 25 years, but I think this one is without a doubt the most important one we've ever done. And that's why I'm so glad you're here. The revenue we get from car dealers is a scary huge piece of our business. Let's face it, if our sales staffs do everything else well, and we take a big step backwards in our billing from car dealers, we've got a problem. What about you? What percentage of your billing comes from car dealers? For a lot of us, it's scary. And that revenue is at greater risk today than at any time in my entire career in the TV business. There are three things happening right now that have the potential to impact your car dealer billing in the next 12 to 18 months. Any one of these things alone would make me nervous, but combine all three and I get really scared. So here's what's going on. Number one, it's the ongoing move of dealer money from traditional advertising to digital. As we've said many times before, that would be great if it was our digital, but it's not. Dealer money is going to auto specific products and for the most parts, dealers don't think we're competitive in that space. And a new generation of dealers, these are the sons and daughters that are taking over stores. A lot of them don't really believe in the power of our core TV product. If you think of it, they're doing exactly what their parents did 25 years ago. 20 or 25 years ago, their usually fathers started taking a ton of money out of the newspaper and giving it to us. And what a run we had. Today, the sons and daughters of these same dealers are taking money from us and well, you know the story. We have a huge sales job to do with these younger dealers, and we better do it quickly. Here's my other concern. At an NAB panel two years ago, a group of younger dealers who still use TV, these are dealers who like us enough to come speak at a TV meeting, and every one of them was talking about how they now use TV for image. And that scares the crap out of me because any of us who were around for the 2009 crash know what happens to image advertising in a downturn. It gets canceled. I used to joke that when the car business gets a cold, the TV business gets the flu. Well, the next car business decline will likely be the biggest loss of dealer money we've ever seen. If they believe in us less and less, they see digital as measurable and us as image, that's easy money to cancel. And we think a slowdown is on the way. Now, we were seeing a lot of signs of this earlier in the year, but don't be deceived by the monthly sales reports. I mean, right now they're great, and November's was really terrific, but a lot of that's being driven by the replacement market uh, for the hurricane-damaged cars in Texas and Florida. So it's an artificial bump. Chances are, in your town, sales are down a little, even in a great economy. Have I succeeded in making you nervous? I hope so, because when this program begins, uh, we're not going to be subtle. We're going to suggest five things we think you must do to protect your dealer revenue. Not should do, must do. It's not just our opinion. We've spent thousands of dollars to prepare for this conference. We paid for Pat Norris, a former dealer himself, and Tom Ray to attend the leading industry meetings to see firsthand what our dealers are facing. We've talked to dozens of experts, and of course, our JDA team is always meeting with dealers. So we're gonna offer you specific suggestions. They require action. But if we don't take action, thank you for letting me visit with you for these few minutes before we start. I wanted to personally tell you why I think these next two hours are so important. I'll see you again as part of the show, tie on and everything. So welcome to Accelerate, recapturing your dealer dollars in 2018. Let's get started.
Welcome to Accelerate, the secrets to recapturing your dealer dollars in 2018. I'm John Hannon. This is going to be a jam-packed couple of hours about a category with huge opportunities. On behalf of Jim Doyle and Associates, I'm so excited to welcome all of you. Before we begin, we want to extend a special thank you to the TV groups, cable companies, and state broadcast associations who are supporting our broadcast. Their names are on the screen now, and we are so very grateful for their support. Today marks the first time in many, many years since we have welcomed a live in-studio audience. So please, don't be alarmed if you hear spontaneous applause or polite laughter. Okay, that went a lot better in rehearsal. <laughs> a special thank you to our in-studio live audience, our Tampa television station friends from Tegna's WTSP, Hearst Television's WMOR, and finally, WTOG, owned by the CBS television station group. And now, a few housekeeping notes. Today is big, because not only are we going to discuss overcoming challenges in the automotive marketing category, but we are also going to give you the tools that you need to be successful with car dealers. All content, videos, testimonials, and guides that we share with you today will be available for download to include in your own presentations for your big money auto dealer closes. You'll find this money-making information at jimdoyle.com backslash accelerate. You'll also find some bonus material not covered in today's show. Again, that's jimdoyle.com backslash accelerate. Simply use the password previously provided to your sales manager for access to the downloads. By the way, if you have a question during today's show, very simply click on the ask question button. It's under the video screen here. Then type your question and submit. It's that easy. I'll be monitoring questions right here at the service desk for the entirety of the show. And finally, we'd love to see a picture of your group watching Accelerate. So please, take out your smartphones, get a good picture, and post it to the Jim Doyle and Associates page on Facebook. Please make sure you tag your call letters and your company. We're also on Twitter, at TV Jim Doyle. The hashtag for this program is hashtag JDA Accelerate. So the housekeeping is all done, and it's time to get started with Accelerate, the secrets to recapturing your dealer dollars in 2018. Now, to kick off the show with our first of five essentials, here's Tom Ray and Pat Norris in our showroom. Well, if there's one thing that is universally accepted in the automotive world, Pat, it's that TV is for branding. Every dealer we talked to, every expert we interviewed, all firmly believe that television is a branding medium. Take a look. What we look to traditional media for right now is to establish the brand of the store. TV is definitely uh, at a different part of the purchase funnel. Uh, I think that they are more top of funnel. They are brand awareness. We do use television uh, or broadcast and cable at a lot of our stores and I think it's best for branding. Most of traditional media, when I say traditional media, I'm talking about cable TV, you know, TV on the affiliates as well as radio, you know, that type of, you know, uh, electronic media. Also, I'm, when I think of traditional media, I think of print, you know, whether it be newspaper or, you know, direct mail. Those, you know, uh, particular media, especially the radio and the TV, for me is mostly about branding. You know, getting our name out there, letting people know about our product, letting them know about the dealership. You know, it doesn't, you know, have an opportunity in most cases to drive a whole bunch of response. Well, Pat, nearly all the dealers and experts we talk to uh, identify TV as their branding tool. And why is that? Well, it's because television is the most powerful branding tool ever invented, right? TV creates brands. But, but, but you have to remember this, there's a problem. If all we do is let sales slow down, things back off, the first thing that's gonna go is branding. That's right. So our essential number one today is we need to debunk the myth that TV is strictly for branding. You know, if we let our dealers continue to believe that we're only a branding medium, that's the only way that they'll use this. And again, as you mentioned, when things slow down, they'll start shifting our dollars to more what they believe to be bottom of the funnel opportunities. You know, Pat, um, I get a little nervous when I see TV relegated to top of funnel only, insinuating that our only role in the path to purchase is awareness. Well, but the rub is this. 
the more we perpetuate the TV as a branding medium, the more dealers are going to see it and use it as a branding medium. So exactly. So here's that branding only approach that we're talking about. Take a look at this. Hempstead Ford Lincoln is a family owned business serving Long Island for over 80 years. That's a tradition you can trust. But Hempstead Ford Lincoln believes that people make the difference. At Bo Townsend Ford Lincoln, our people make the difference. I've been with Bo Townsend Ford now. I'm in my 15th year. Um, it's a great place to work. It's a very family-oriented atmosphere, and I think that makes it easier. It's the only place I've ever sold Fords, and I, I wouldn't sell anywhere else. At Rudolph Chevrolet, our people really do make the difference. We truly value your business, and our top priority is helping you find the best price and payment for the car or truck you've been looking for. Come see the difference at Rudolph Chevrolet. At Toyota of Noonan, we believe buying or servicing a vehicle should be a fun, rewarding, no-hassle experience. So it's the personal goal of each of our associates to see that you leave happy every time. It's our guarantee. My priority. My mission. To help you see what it's like to love car buying. Our people make the difference. Come visit us at Toyota of Noonan today. Well, Pat. Clearly, it's our people that make the difference. <laughs> Classic advertising, blah, blah, branding, top of mind awareness, call it what you want, that won't sell cars. No one's friendlier than our people, Tom. That's right. Well, our friend, uh, Houston dealer Billy Frank, said that in good times, dealers form bad habits. In the years of 17 million sales, it's easy to say, well, gosh, TV's a great branding medium. Yeah, but listen to what our automotive video expert, Andrew Myers, has to share. There is a stigma out there that, deal, that when I ask dealers also, I get the feedback a lot that they tell me when I spend money on TV, it's more of a branding exercise. Digital is a Swiss army knife. If you need a screw, the corkscrew, if you need a knife, if you need a shorter knife or a bottle opener, they're all on there. So I feel like dealers feel like the, that, that form of media has the precision to actually motivate a customer. Whereas I feel like what they say, what they're unintentionally saying when they say TV is a branding object, is that it's a blunt object. It's a club. There's only one way to hit people with it. And so I have lower expectations of what I can do in that format. That loyalty doesn't exist in the automotive marketplace anymore. So the idea that only aiming for branding yourself is viable is less and less viable each day because customers live in a zero moment of truth, point of sale type of environment. You know, when I wanna order something from my house, my phone is in my hand and I'm talking to somebody that can provide that to me seconds later. So we need to make sure that we're in somebody's direct path to a decision, that our calls to action are strong, that our messaging is specific, so that we actually have a chance to motivate the person that we're talking to and not just hope they remember our name. Because I can tell you the top five automotive brands that come out in my head, I remember their jingle or whatever it is, but I've never bought a car at any of those places. So simply knowing that a car dealership is out there is not enough to drive someone to your lot the way it used to be. Dealers just don't have large enough goals in that area and they're, they're willing to settle for it just being a branding operation. Uh, when in reality, it could be just as effective as digital is. So it really is incumbent upon us as an industry to push back on that TV is for branding only mentality. In fact, here's how Brad Sider from TVB handles the TV is for branding discussion. We hear this all the time from the dealers. The dealers will say, all right, we use television is just for branding. That's all it is. It's a shotgun. Uh, we let them know that you use television through every single step of the consumer decision process from the top of the funnel, which is branding and awareness down to make a purchase, the very bottom of the purchase funnel. Television is the most effective medium we have at every single step of the consumer decision process. It's just a matter of how are you using it as a dealer. If your ads are just branding ads, then it's a branding medium. But your ad should have a call to action. Every ad that we work with at the tier three level has a call to action on it. That call to action is reaching those consumers at the bottom of the purchase funnel where they're ready to make a purchase. So it absolutely 100% can be used as a make a purchase, direct call to action type of medium. And it's where you put the ads. If I'm running branding and I'm just shotgunning and I'm all over television, then that's using it in the way that they're thinking about it, just branding. But if I want it for call to action, then I focus my advertising. I'm focusing it now to just certain days of the week, to just certain day parts. I'm owning those day parts and I'm building up to my busiest day of the week, which is Saturday, and that call to action, when they see my ad for the last time, the third or fourth time on that Saturday morning, they know that, hey, today I'm getting up, and I'm going down, and I'm gonna see my Ford dealer, and I wanna look at that Ford F-150 that has that 0% financing. 
television absolutely can be used as a call to action. Well, there you go, Pat. Television, a call to action medium. It's a powerful call to action medium. Look, as Brad just shared, it's about the attractive lease payment. It's 0% down. It's 0% financing. It's, it's the more for your trade than anybody else. And that's why, again, campaigning around events and holidays and specials are important. Think about this Black Friday. It was awesome for auto dealers around the country. Uh, Fourth of July sales and even the St. Patrick's, my personal favorite, saving O the Green. There you go. In fact, here's how uh, number one volume selling Subaru dealer in the country uses television. This is John Adams from Hugh Burger Subaru in Colorado Springs. So, Pat, here's a Subaru dealer that in Colorado Springs outsells Toyota, he outsells Honda. In fact, he sells more Subarus than any other dealership in the country, and he understands that television absolutely works as a call to action medium. So, there's plenty of ways, even beyond price, to stimulate the market. Uh, I want to share with you some words from Chris Herman. Now, Chris uh, is the president of Herman Advertising. This is an automotive only advertising agency. He handles 70 dealerships around the country and he's got some very powerful thoughts on how television must be used to motivate the market. Here's Chris Herman. The one thing that digital marketing has done has provided us the opportunity to reach customers in a very one-on-one -on -one and specific way and be able to measure the results from that. But in many ways with digital marketing, we are placing the dealership in the hands of the consumer. And what I mean by that is this, by focusing a large portion of dealerships budgets on digital marketing, we are giving the consumer the power to decide when they search for the dealership, how they search for the dealership, how they acquire information, and they contact the dealership when they're ready. One of the biggest mistakes that we can make in the retail automotive field is to move too far away from stimulating the marketplace. And anytime we've run into a problem as an agency in terms of driving results for a dealership, nine times out of 10, it has come when we have gotten a little bit too digital and we have taken our eye off the ball of stimulating the marketplace. If you go back 20, 25 years ago, what was effective retail automotive advertising and marketing? It was large, high frequency, high reach schedules on radio or TV or cable, pounding a message that motivated the marketplace to act. By removing that from the marketplace in the modern digital landscape and placing the process in the hands of the consumer on the digital side, in many cases we have stopped stimulating the marketplace. We have stopped creating a must shop scenario and that is a big mistake. So to your audience, the importance of traditional messaging is still important today as it was 20, 25 years ago. We have to continue to stimulate the marketplace with a message, either why buy, where to buy, what to buy, that's up to you to decide. But we have to stimulate the marketplace to drive them into this digital landscape. And that balance is very important now more than ever. So to bring that back to attribution, we can spend hours and hours and hours and hours studying attribution. But don't forget that you still have to stimulate your marketplace to get that consumer into your digital footprint and then bring them into your dealership. Two. Digital. <laughs> now, let me tell you how I met Chris. Chris was one of the many uh, featured speakers at the Automotive Internet Battle Plan I attended earlier this year. Uh, Three-day conference, uh, Pat, about 150 car dealers and about a dozen speakers. And all the, the, the speakers and presenters that I saw, Chris was the only one that mentioned anything at all about traditional. Let's hear a little bit more from Chris Herman. What we look to traditional media for right now is to establish the brand of the store. And the brand might be that they are aggressive retail marketers. The brand might be the dealership or the dealer principal on TV. 
but our job with traditional advertising is to influence the community and the marketplace and get them to understand why they should do business at the dealership. And so again, the primary focus of our traditional messaging is more brand oriented. That being said, there are certain times of year when an aggressive retail sales event message is absolutely crucial. We're coming up on Black Friday. We're coming up on the year end clearance. You know, in the spring, you'll have Memorial Day. In the summer, you're going to have the model year end clearance. These are times when dealerships have to be aggressive retailers, right? So, our combination approach now, and I realize this might sound like I'm shifting my tune, I'm really not. Number one, it's to brand the store and give the consumer an understanding why they should choose your dealership over another. But we cannot rely 100% on branding. There are times of the year that it needs to be a traditional, aggressive, exciting retail sales message for your dealership. So Pat, let's dig a little bit deeper into this idea that TV is for branding uh, only. What are some of the objections that we're going to hear? Well, what you typically hear is the dealer says my tier one, which is the factory ad money, and my dealer regional ad money, which is tier two, is going to promote products and incentives. And so therefore, I'll take my money as a dealer, my tier three money, and I'll tell the world how nice my people are and, and that I've won 10 presidents award. What in reality the dealer should do is take that tier three money, dovetail with what the factory and the regional group is doing and say, yes, I have those products and incentives, but I've got something more. I'm going to give you more for your trade, free maintenance, tires for life, something to stimulate you to come see me versus the competition. Got it, exactly. In fact, that's what our dealer consultant, uh, Glenn Pash, shared as well. Here's Glenn Pash. In my mind, tier one and tier two, their responsibility is, is to promote the vehicle. Right, that's their job. Promote the vehicle and why Honda's better than Nissan or Nissan's better than this. All right, I think tier three really should be focusing on yes, I have those same deals, so connect the message that what you saw on TV, tier one, and it's the uh, you know uh, Black Friday coming up for Thanksgiving, Black Friday, or you know, uh, in, in the end of the year when this is going, your event is going to be, you know, end of the year clearance. Well, we need that same messaging so that it connects so they know they're going to get that same deal there. Well, how about when a, a dealer says, well, there's only a few people in the market at any given time. That's why I use TV to promote my brand. But we were very fortunate to uh, have a chance to interview a gentleman named Kevin Fry. And Kevin is the e-commerce director at Jeff Weiler Auto Group. This is a top 50 auto group in the country. And let's listen to how Kevin Fry directs the Jeff Weiler strategy. You have to think of the reality of, of getting the most return for your spend. Only three to 5% of people might be uh, in the market to buy a car at any point in time. And when we do a traditional media buyer at the TV station, I mean, we're trying to make our best effort guess based on demographics and all the things we have to try and target our shoppers, let's say for that specific tam uh, channel and time frame. And then of those 100 people, we might only have three to five that are actually in market to buy a car. So what we will typically do is we'll try to put out a strong call to action with the idea that hopefully we can drive a few additional people in the market with that strong call to action and get a better return for our money. So there we have it, Pat, a good strong call to action. Well, what you're trying to do effectively, Tom, is you're trying to pull a market forward, and in particular, a potential buyer forward as well, too. Somebody that maybe is sitting there not even knowing that they're in the market for a car. We put a good, strong offer out there with, a, with some urgency, this weekend only, this week only, and we just may pull that consumer forward and sell them a vehicle this week. Right, and having an offer and a good strong call to action also makes it easier to measure effectiveness, right? Well, absolutely. If they come in for the one ninety nine dollars lease or they come in because you're going to give them $5,000 more for their trade over Kelly Blue Book, well, then you clearly know that television stimulated that behavior. Yeah. Let's hear a little bit more from our experts. You've got to design the campaign from the get-go with measurement in mind. You can't just hope for the best results. You have to have those hooks like you talked about in your books, like a vanity URL, uh, a vanity call tracking number. So you need to have those strong uh, call to actions if you are expecting a response to, to actually take place. You know, dealers are very, um, they're very suspicious to being sold in the wrong way. So as, as a traditional 
media sales representative, I think it's really important to understand the overall landscape of the dealership's business. And while terms like VDP and SRP are important to understand, while terms like business development center are important to understand, don't lose sight of the fact that your tools and or products, whether it's traditional TV, cable, radio, or the digital assets that you're able to represent for your company, don't lose sight of the fact that those assets still play a very important role in not only shaping the opinion and decision-making process of the consumer, they definitely affect the consumer's behavior in terms of what they do when they're online. I realize it's a long way of answering your question. So to say, can TV in and of itself be a VDP driver? Well, not directly in, in the way that some of the digital tools are, but good branded and retail messaging for dealerships in the marketplace still drives consumers in the digital space to the dealership's website, which should in turn result in search results page views and vehicle details page views. So it's not as direct a connection as you might like as it is in the digital world, but we as a marketing agency for dealerships have still found an incredible need for traditional messaging driving customers into the digital footprint. Well, Pat, we keep hearing automotive referred to as retail. Um, explain the importance to our audience and all the AEs that uh, they need to understand that automotive is a retail category. Well, yeah, Tom, it's a retail store. I mean, think about it. You go in to buy products and services at your dealership. It's frankly no different than going into Home Depot to buy a washer and dryer or a refrigerator for that matter. And that's why, again, it's, it's important to consider that when you're campaigning, think about holidays and events. You know, our biggest uh, sale of the year, our tent sale, uh, historically low pricing, etc. And there's one thing I want to share with our audience out there today is this. We know for a fact that advertising for dealers in the last two weeks of the month is 200% more effective than the first two weeks of the month. And I think there's a couple dynamics that come to play in there. Um, first of all, as the manufacturers track their sales rates in the market, if they see certain models are not selling as fast or as well as they'd like, they typically bring out extra incentives in the back half of the month to help spur those sales. And I also think there's a dynamic that plays inside the household. If you think about all of our households, typically your mortgage payment, your rent payment, your credit card payments all come due in the first 10 days of the month. And so therefore, you know, there's a lot more financial pressure in the household. And when you get to that second half of the month, well, maybe there's an extra paycheck or two to work with when you buy or lease that next vehicle. And that's how we've been trained to shop the store. Absolutely. Get in there and beat up the dealer because they're trying to make their quota for the month. Excellent. So, Pat, what are the action steps to help us debunk the myth that TV is for branding only? Well, the first thing I would do is to get in there and ask your dealer, how do you use television? And then be prepared to deal with the TV is for branding only mentality. Um, I'd also put together a good selection of automotive creative that has call to actions to share with them. And be sure you share the clips that we just shared with all of you. Uh, from our experts today, this morning so far. Now they will be available for download after the show today. And first of all, prove it with their metrics, all right? Uh, show them that their metrics coincide with television being a powerful tool to drive web traffic. And we'll talk more about that later. Lots more about that later. Well, right now let's go over to the service center with more from Jim and John. Jim, before we dig into the, to the questions about essential number one, TV is for branding, I, I'm looking at some of the, the questions coming in here from the crowd. By the way, just a quick reminder, your questions at the bottom of the screen, just type in your question, hit submit, we've got them right here on the set, we can answer them on the fly. But I heard nails against the chalkboard from every digital seller in the country when Chris Herman was speaking, and he said, eh, maybe a little too digital, you cannot forget to motivate the marketplace. Are we anti-digital? Oh my God, <laughs> we love digital. Uh, and our company will sell, uh, I think, close to $10 million of digital for our clients around the country this year. Uh, the TV station I was a partner in built a robust and wonderful digital services uh, business. We love digital. But when it comes to auto dealers, there are some exceptions. 
There are some dealers who have done just an amazing, uh, some, some, some TV groups and cable companies who have done an amazing job of, of, of building products and, and working with dealers, but for the most part, we're losing that battle. Our share of the revenue in t of, our, of our TV is not anywhere, I mean, it's way higher than our share of the revenue with the digital services money that they're spending. And so uh, we've got to, to work on that. And, and by the way, it's not just the strength of a TV message, it's the strength of even the ones we use on our O and O platforms where, where, look, if I place an ad on one of our mobile platforms today that says, you know, check our wonderful people, click here, or I have an ad that say, you know, 15 F-150s, $2,500 off, which one do you think is gonna get more clicks? So we're using it in terms of the power of television today because we can't afford to lose that money in this image kind of thing. So, so the friendly buying experience doesn't exist. <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, first of all, I, I'm pretty sure I think consumers wonder if it does, uh, no matter how much we say. But then I think the second thing is, look, uh, we talk a lot with dealers about how a, a, a lead to their website is going to be the most profitable lead that they get. So uh, let's see, what's going to drive me to their website? A message that says, the home of friendly people, five president awards, to use Pat's term, or uh, uh, 50 used cars under 9.99 or 99.99. So, you know, let's just be realistic. Price still plays a role. Uh, you know, dealers think that branding and building a position in the marketplace are are inconsistent. Um, you know, look, we have lots of dealers who have you know become the home of the you know $15,000 used car or the truck center for their marketplace. That's a branding message, uh, but it's one that that shows up in measurable traffic to their websites. Last year, we had the entire Jim Doyle and Associates team at, at the NAB of uh, the Small Market Exchange. We all sat with interest staring at the stage when we had millennial dealers on the stage, and every single one of them felt that TV was for branding. W what do you say to the account executives uh, and the managers viewing today who are saying, gosh, you know, I, I know that that's not true, but the dealer thinks that's what it is. How, how do you call the baby ugly, in other words? Well, in other words, how do you go to one of your largest clients and say what you're doing is a mistake? And uh, look, that is a very, very, very challenging thing. And I'll make a couple of just quick observations about that. Uh, number one is a relationship always precedes being able to have those kinds of candid conversations. So if you don't have a relationship with that dealer today uh, at a high level, then uh, obviously that's a difficult conversation to have. But the second thing is it's basic to sales. Uh, anytime I'm going to suggest that somebody do something that's slightly different than what they're doing, I'm going to suggest that others have found that, or here's the experience of other people. So I never criticize the baby. I just talk about what other people have had. And hopefully what we've done today, and I watch these clips and go, wow, what a resource they are. Uh, what we've done today is provide you with the information that can help you bring that story to the dealer at the highest level. More on that subject later. So the easiest way to go about that is very simply go to the downloads, take the videos, take the testimonials that we're providing for you today, put them in your presentations and close the dollars. Yeah. Can't be any simpler. Uh, <laughs> from, your lips to, from your lips to God's ears. <laughs> that wraps up uh, Essential Number One. Let's go back to the showroom with Pat and Tom and learn about Essential Number Two. So, Pat, would it be fair to say that most dealers are using Google Analytics to track their website activities and AdWords campaigns? Well, for better or worse, Google Analytics has become the default tracking tool in the automotive category, and it stands to reason because the website is the front door to the dealership today. It's the cyber showroom. Certainly. Well, that's what we heard from uh, all of our panel. Let's take a listen. The website has become, you know, the dealership of, of the modern day. The modern day battlefield that a dealer fights today uh, is to get the shopper to come into their virtual dealership. If they don't come into their virtual dealership first, which is their website, they really have no chance of actually getting them into the physical dealership. So that means we have a, a tremendous emphasis in any type of marketing we do uh, to get them to that website experience first and then from there convert them hopefully to that actual showroom visit. Okay, so for the dealer, getting traffic to the website is absolutely critical, and most dealers measure their traffic and activity via Google Analytics. 
You know, Pat, it's become so important that Google recently released their automotive retail playbook, which is designed to help dealers maximize their marketing efforts and help prioritize Google's uh, uh, products and features. Uh, this is what Google's playbook does. It identifies what they're calling four pillars of Google's best practices. Let's take a look at those on the screen here. I'm going to walk through these with you. The first is foundational fundamentals. And this is things like the website. The next is Brilliant Basics, which covers things like paid search and targeting. Uh, then you see today's differentiators, which goes deeper into things like video. And finally, what they call future growth levers. Google suggests that most dealers, more than half in fact, are still in those first two pillars uh, of foundations and basics. So here's what happened, Pat. In October, I sat in on a, a webinar given by Google and their automotive retail strategist. Her name is Kelly McNearney. And let me share some of what I've heard. First of all, Google and, and she in this webinar credits television with driving traffic online. In fact, the example that they use in the webinar is the, uh, the Kia Nero ad that was featured in this uh, past year's Super Bowl uh, with Melissa McCarthy. And uh, here's what they had to say. The Google strategist credited the campaign for creating a 1,500% spike in online interest. You see that uh, graph there? Uh, a direct correlation between running on television and online activity. Earlier this year, Pat, uh, the Marketing Science Institute published a research paper titled TV, Ad, uh, TV Ads and Search Spikes, A Deeper Understanding. Now, the study tracked advertising for Ford, Chevy, and Ram pickup trucks, both on a national and on a local level, against online activity immediately following the ads. Let me share uh, what some of the study concluded. First of all, the study said that we have found convincing evidence that brands can now detect post-ad spikes from minute-by-minute -minute brand search data. Brand search spikes peak in the first five minutes after an ad insertion. The study also compared uh, national branding campaigns to local price-oriented campaigns. Here's what the study concluded. The effects of local dealership TV ads, which are predominantly price-focused, show a similar pattern in that the largest effects of post-brand search are realized in the minutes after the ad. So, price-focused local ads result in immediately, uh, immediate online activity. Here's what the uh, study also went on to say. In trucks, search spikes were smaller after price-focused commercials than after brand-focused advertising. However, the study also suggested that an ad that maximizes brand search may be found inferior to an ad that focuses on lower funnel metrics and leads consumers directly to that brand website. Well, it stands to reason, though, Tom, if you think about it, because, you know, when you have a brand-only ad, people are going to go online and search for more information about the product itself. But if you have more of a lower funnel call-to-action commercial, then people go typically to the dealer's website directly to learn more about the deal. So, and effectively, that, that uh, call-to-action, lower funnel ad commercial drives more quality traffic versus people are just trying to figure out what this particular vehicle is. Yeah, in fact, here was the study's warning. Finally, the dependable and sizable influence of TV ads on online brand searches <clears throat> cautions marketers against the use of last touch attribution strategies as they may overestimate the effect of search engine marketing and social media advertising and, and understate the generative influence of television advertising. Pretty compelling stuff from the Marketing <laughs> Science Institute, Pat. Well, Professor Tom, that's very compelling, actually. It was deep stuff. That was heavy stuff. <laughs> I'm going to get a little less academic and more real world on you, though. I want to share with you some Google Analytics to prove that uh, Google uh, proves that TV works from a Midwest high volume import dealership. Now, you'll see in their first slide, that's the site traffic taken directly from their Google Analytics last month. And you can see where that site traffic starts to increase over the course of the month. The next slide is when the television campaign kicks in, and they always run those last two weeks of the month. Now, when we overlay those particular spots, you find that there's a definite correlation between when their TV spots run and their web traffic starts to spike. And by the way, note, this is a very price-oriented, call to action, this weekend, this week only dealer that says, pick me over my competition to come do business with. Got it. In fact, it actually works in reverse as well. Now, you're going to see here uh, an overlay graph of a completely different dealer. Uh, and you can see when they're not running on television, those are the valleys on the graph, their site traffic goes down dramatically. Again, a direct correlation <coughs> between television advertising and website traffic.
So let me tie this back to that Google Automotive Playbook we talked about. Google uh, that identifies uh, in that playbook what they call their five micro moments of auto shopping. So I want to share those with you. The first is called awareness or which car is best. The second consideration, is it right for me? And then we have what uh, Google calls the three ready to buy moments, which are can I afford it? Am I getting a deal? And where should I buy? Now, Google's clear advice in this webinar to local dealers is to focus only on those ready to buy moments. Now, take a look at the types of keywords that Google recommends in those ready to buy moments. Words like price, financing, quote, lease, deals, incentives, offers, sales, specials, test drives. As we learned already today, Pat, television can and has to be more than just a branding tool. We don't have to be just top of funnel, and these are the same ready to buy moments and uh, moments, terms and Absolutely. actions that we should feature in our television creative. Google proves that television Must drives be. search, but Google also wants you to believe that television is a branding tool and it's search that drives the ready to buy visit. In fact, Google even describes it as brand search, which means uh, a term searched is the dealer name. Doyle, Chevrolet, Norris Auto Group, those are brand searches. And we certainly do drive brand searches. Well, we interviewed attribution expert Steve White. Steve is the founder and CEO of a company called Clairvoy. Uh, Steve's company has developed what they call multi-touch attribution software uh, for the automotive industry. Now, this is, uh, the, has the ability to more accurately track uh, where leads are coming from. So let's hear from Steve White. When dealers you know, are running TV, we see the lift in paid search. Uh, search impressions from a brand search perspective, we see lift in or organic traffic, uh, albeit it's delayed, which makes it more challenging to measure, um, but we definitely see, see that lift. When you think about, you know, what, what prompted someone to actually search the dealership name? I mean, people aren't just going to Google and, and deciding to, to actually type in the dealership name or the, or the brand search. There was something that stimulated that particular search. And what we've found with our data is that, you know, a lot of that is actually TV driven uh, because of the mass reach that, that TV is able to achieve. And so um, you have to have a measurement tool that can take into account uh, and factor in the brand search that was actually driving traffic to the dealership. Otherwise, uh, Google is going to get credit for that, for that particular sale or that particular lead. Yeah. Uh, let's do a little, dig a little bit deeper though. Uh, those aren't necessarily brand searches from branding only campaigns and Kevin Fry is going to explain that for us. Video is the number one most influential tool available to a dealer to uh, persuade an automotive shopper out there today. There's no question about that. The, there's two angles to it you got to look at is number one where are you going to capture the shopper to get that video in front of them so it's seen and then number two where most dealers fall short is how do you measure the results of that so I'll give you an example with within Jeff Weiler when we look at video we really, really don't look at traditional or digital we're just looking at video content so we produce that first and then we're putting that out there in the different channels we have available to put it in front of car shoppers. So that could be your traditional TV. It could be YouTube TrueView or something to that effect. But then the next thing, the tricky part is this, how do I measure the success of our video efforts? And you have to think from a common sense perspective, what is a consumer going to do after they see that video message? And I can tell you this, nine times out of 10, what they're going to do is they're going to go to Google or YouTube, whatever the case may be, and search the dealership name and the brand. So they're searching brand specific terms, Jeff Weiler Chevrolet, Jeff Weiler Kia. They're not going to be searching for the $199 per month lease, Honda, Accord, whatever the case may be. So what that means, if you're an astute person on the dealer side or even as a, a media account rep, you should be looking for a rise in the organic search results for brand terms on a dealership website, which you can find within Google Analytics. Lots there, Pat, break that down for us. Well, it, it's simple, Tom. Kevin is absolutely right. You see an ad with a great offer, you don't Google the offer, you Google the dealership itself that has the offer. You know, but you have to understand how to use Google Analytics properly, and Kevin has a warning for us about that. Let's listen in. 
the biggest pitfall that dealers face is that they're going to go too far and complex in their efforts to analyze it. Uh, I'm one of those guys in the industry. I've got very advanced skills in Google Analytics, and I do a lot of cutting edge stuff. But there comes a point in time where you have to back off and use common sense. And that's why I'm trying to share that message with, with people like they're probably in your audience today. What do you do when you see a TV commercial like that? What is your initial response? And the reality is in today's market, they're pretty much going to think, gee, I saw that commercial on a Kia Soul for Jeff Weiler. So they're probably just going to search Jeff Weiler Kia. Now the counterpart of that is we see that lift in the organic search results, but knowing that's how the consumer responds, it's important for us as dealers that if someone goes to our Jeff Weiler Kia website, we have that special front and center that we've been promoting with all those video marketing efforts where they can pick up the next step in the process. So it really comes down to a cross-channel strategy with multiple touch points by the consumer. And having all of that messaging consistent. It throughout. must be consistent across yeah. the board. Yeah. Again, uh, I like the phrase, it's not a digital strategy, it's just a strategy in a digital world. By the way, uh, at the end of that uh, Google Playbook webinar, I want to share the offer that uh, the Google representative uh, uh, put forth. You see it on your screen there. So she suggested that if you spend $15,000 over three months with YouTube, the Google product, obviously, Google will throw in free production, account setup and optimization, but you have to use one of their approved partners. And I thought it was rather interesting that when uh, somebody questioned in why 15,000 over three months, the Google rep said because 5,000 a month is the right amount that it takes to make YouTube work. She also added though, but hey, uh, if they skip the ad, you don't have to pay. And by the way, they skip the ad 80% of the time in automotive. So Pat, what are the action steps uh, from this essential? Well, the first thing you do is download the Google Dealer Playbook, and we'll have a link for it again on our download site, and get to know it, read it, understand what's telling dealers to do with Google and YouTube. Uh, but the real opportunity is for you to be part of the Google Analytics conversation. The best thing that you could do is to get your dealer's Google Analytics, line that up with your TV schedule, and prove that there's a correlation in between when they run on TV and when they see their web traffic spike. And be sure you match it up when they're doing branding advertising, if that's the case versus call to action sale advertising and see if there's a fact a, a better lift with the call to action advertising. But, but Tom, here's reality, okay? Dealers have become way too sophisticated today and we'll share a lot more of that later in the show. But the real buzzword today is attribution, who sold it. That's what dealers want to know. They're getting inundated with new attribution tools that go way beyond the website. And here's where we must up our game, absolutely. Excellent. Lots more on that later. Now let's head back to the service desk with Jim and John. You know, Pat was using the buzzword there, attribution, and it kind of threw me off because I've got a lot of astute viewers out there today who are tuned into this last touch phenomena. It is very frustrating to do such a wonderful job for the auto dealer and never get credit. It's kind of like I'm a marathon runner, not really, if I was, right? Uh, and, and I ran 24 miles and you ran the last two miles and you got the trophy. That's frustrating, that's aggravating. I think it makes sense. <laughs> I don't want to run any more than the last two miles. <laughs> so, so as an industry, do we really understand this attribution? Do we really understand how important analytics are to the future of our sales success with auto dealers? I was, uh, uh, when one of the uh, tapes was uh, being played, I was thinking, I used to schlep ads to used car guys, and now we're looking at multi-touch attribution trackers. And uh, in some ways, that line is sort of an indication of how much more complicated our business has become and our role as account executives have become. And I would tell you, I uh, so strongly feel that whatever we can do to either have the dealer begin to start to look at their own analytics or uh, we're seeing more and more and more situations where stations are getting access through quality digital sellers to a dealer's analytics. That's going to help us not just to uh, provide them with digital products, that's going to help them uh, to really understand and for us to show the power of TV. I love those two graphs, one from the Midwestern dealer and one from the uh, smaller town. Uh, both of those, I think, are just 
that is so powerful to be able to have that tangible evidence that we've never had any time in my career. So I love that section. So, so it would be safe to say this is not a suggestion, this is a necessity. You have to start working toward those analytics in order to prove, quite honestly, your value. The, the analytics show tangibility in a time where accountability is the big story for everybody. All of us are called to be more accountable. And digital provides accountability. We do as well if we have access to the analytics. Fabulous, fabulous. A lot more show at hand here before we take our break, but first, we go back to the showroom with Tom and Pat to discuss essential number three. Well, Pat, there's an opportunity in automotive for those that are hungry enough to go after it, and it lies just outside the boundaries of your metro. What we're talking about are those outlying dealerships that are uh, outside the metro and get little to no attention uh, typically from our local media community. The geographic landscape has changed and our team is having really good success uh, addressing those outside the metro dealers. Great luck. Let's talk a little bit though how dealers territory is defined by the manufacturer. First of all, every dealer is assigned an AOR or area of responsibility. Think of it like zip code, it actually is by census tract, but more or less the same thing. Now, each dealer is assigned a certain number of cars they must sell every year inside this area of responsibility. If they don't meet those goals, then they're considered sales ineffective. And that's bad news for a dealer because the manufacturer starts putting pressure on them. The two things the manufacturer always tells a dealer that's not performing is one, buy more cars from us, and two, spend more money in advertising. So that's a good thing for account executives because there's pain there. I met with a dealer not long ago that had that situation and decided to step up and spend some real money promoting a brand he was falling behind on. But let's also talk about two key words in the auto business that mean quite a bit. One is pump in versus pump out, okay? Think of pump in as good for your dealer. Pump in, pardon me, let me say it backwards. Pump in is actually bad for your dealer. Pump in is bad because that's a competitor who has pumped a car in or sold a car in your backyard, taking that opportunity away from you. Pump out is good because pump out means you as the dealer have sold a car in somebody other's backyard, somebody other's area of responsibility, and that's good. So in talking to these outside the uh, metro dealers, you want to have a talk about are they sales effective? And number two is pump in a problem for them. In other words, are the metro dealers taking business out of their backyards and how you can help to stem that? Yeah. And in fact, that'll lead us to Dale Early, who is the owner of Hyundai of Silsby in <coughs> Silsby, Texas. His store, his dealership is about an hour outside of his metro, which is Beaumont, Port Arthur, and in fact, about two hours outside of Houston. Let's listen to Dale Early. What we really tried to achieve, to be honest about it, is dominance within a 50 mile radius of our location, which pretty much encompasses, you know, uh, most of the you know, towns that are around us obviously, you know, gets us into Beaumont and Port Arthur. You know, we try to make sure that within a 50 mile radius, yes, we do sell folks, you know, out of the Houston market. And, you know, and by, you know, most times when that does happen is because somebody has been online and they saw a particular piece of inventory that they couldn't find somewhere else. Okay, Pat, so what's the strategy in approaching these outside the metro dealers? Well, really simply put, it's to drive them to that outside the uh, uh, metro dealers website. Because at that point, it doesn't matter how big or small that dealer showroom is. When you get them to their website, they're just as big as the biggest dealer in town uh, at the end of the day. And be, believe me, Tom, no one's going to drive an hour to buy a car if they haven't been to the dealer's website first. And you know, I even suggest someone would drive 10 minutes before they've gone to the dealer's Every, website. Everyone's going to the website first. Right. Uh, in fact, let's hear from Dale early on his website strategy. If you're not trying to make sure that you give people all the compelling reasons that they need to be able to make a decision on doing business with you on your website, you're missing a huge opportunity because the majority of the folks that end up on our showroom have already been online and a lot of them have already been to your website. I have been, you know, working here this past year on trying to find more and more engagement tools that I can put on my website to be able to get them to stay there longer and allow them to be able to do more. Uh, you know, we're already starting to see somewhat of a shift to online purchasing. I think we still are ways away from that particular, uh, you know, situation. But, you know, I'm giving people an opportunity to be able to do a whole lot more right there on the website and really shorten the amount of time they spend in the showroom. So what are these uh, engagement tools that Dale is referring well, to? Well, what he's talking about basically is chat. 
He's talking about uh, chat sessions, uh, text messages to the dealership, and also about form fills, people going online to fill out, you know, what's my trade in worth, credit application, things like that. These are very robust tools, and these are the tools dealers are utilizing to measure the success of their campaigning. Yeah, in fact, um, I love Dale's ad, very effective on driving traffic to the website. Let's watch Dale Early's uh, Hillsby, uh, uh, Hyundai of Silsby, Texas ad. Thank you for calling Hyundai of Silsby. How can I make it easy for you today? Hi, I was on your website and I just wanted to know, what's your best price on a 2015 Hyundai Sonata? We can get you in a Sonata for just $21,995. Let me ask you, is that lower than what you heard from other dealers? You're the only one who would give me a price on the phone. You want to test drive it today? Sure, that'd be great, but it's Sunday. Well, come on in. We're open. Wow, that was easy. We make it easy at Hyundai of Silsby. Pat, how many dealers are willing to give a price on the phone? Well, not many. In my day, it was a, a no-no. It was all about, like, give me your phone number just in case we get disconnected. But really, today, it's all about... <laughs> we did that. Today, it's all about <laughs> transparency. If you don't give the consumer what they want, when they want it, they'll just simply go to the next dealership website and get the information they're seeking and give them the first opportunity to buy a car. Yeah. Well, what about those outlying dealers who say that uh, advertising on TV is wasteful? Well, let's listen to TVB's Brad Sider. I love going outside of the city and, and visiting with dealers that think that they're too far out to use television because in their mind, it's wasteful. So the, and, and every AE that's gone out on a call knows this. If you talk to a dealer uh, that is only in one small part of the DMA, they're usually buying zone cable or they're doing nothing but digital or targeted direct mail. And we go to those dealers and we let them know that we can help you grow your business. And this is the way that you look at television. You don't look at it as waste. You look at it as the ability to talk to 100% of my potential customers. Even in my one area where I'm at, if I think I'm just going to pull from just this zip code or just these two zip codes, if all I'm buying is zone cable, then I'm only having the opportunity to talk to a fraction of my potential customers. What I want that dealer to do is recognize that I can talk to 100% of my potential customers. And the way to do that is through broadcast TV. And don't worry about the spillover into the rest of the DMA. Because your consumer works in other parts of the DMA. They have friends and family who live in other parts of the DMA that will see that advertising and they can influence that consumer. Or you as a dealer, you can pull from consumers in other parts of the DMA. Research shows that they will drive for a deal. So if you have the best deal, if you have that 0% financing going on or that 199 lease, and you have the inventory available, the color, the make, the model that that consumer wants, they will drive to your dealership to see it but they'll never know about you. They'll never hear about you if you're not on broadcast TV. If all that dealer is doing is targeted direct mail and zone cable, the only people they're talking to is a very small fraction of their potential customers in that one little area of the city. So, Pat, we've created a campaign specifically for these outlying dealers. Uh, tell us about what's your number. Well, I had the pleasure to work with a dealer in North Carolina, Eastern North Carolina, that was convinced no one would drive east of I-95 to come and give them a shot at uh, buying a car for them. But what we found out in our timeout call, or our, our diagnostic call, was that people did come from further than what they thought. So we created a campaign called What's Your Number? Let's take a look. 74. 46. What do these people have in common? 87. They all have a number. 63. The number of miles they're willing to go for the largest selection and best prices on new Chevys and Cadillacs. So, what's your number? Make the drive for the largest selection and best prices east of 95. Marine Chevrolet, what's your number? A great piece of creative, Pat. So dig into the details of the strategy. Well, by putting the number on the football, Tom, it creates this anticipation of like, well, what does this number mean? And of course, the payoff is it means that people will drive longer in order to get a, a good deal on a vehicle from them. What were the results? Well, the results were awesome. We drew people in from much farther away than they ever had before, and they had huge web traffic spikes. Excellent. And uh, you've sold this idea in multiple markets. I've sold this in a number of markets, as well as my colleagues. And as a matter of fact, there's some of you out there 
are successfully using that campaign today. Excellent. Uh, uh, any other good creative ideas for the outside the metro dealer? Well, we've done several great web drivers. Um, I've always liked the line, you make the drive, we'll make the deal, or find it quick with just a click. And we've also seen other uh, different creative ideas to sort of recreate that concept of cars like eggs are cheaper in the country. In fact, uh, let's take a look at our <laughs> apples to apples campaign. You know, some people don't mind paying too much. Lucky for the rest of us, there's Wild West Chevrolet. How far would you drive to save hundreds or even thousands of dollars on a vehicle? At Wild West, we make sure you get every discount you can get. Do yourself a favor. Take this short drive to our small country town and save big heaps of money at Wild West Chevrolet in Yarrington. So, Pat, what are the specific action steps to approach those outlying dealers? Well, first of all, drop your mouse, get your car keys, and get in the car and go out and meet these people out there. See where they're located, see how they're merchandised, sort of get a flavor for, for the market around them. Um, have great examples of creative. Again, this will all be for download uh, available to you. And have some data, have cross-seller poke data and talk to them about sales effectiveness and talk to them if pump-in's a problem. In other words, that Metro dealers are taking vehicles outside of their backyard and come up with great creative strategies to stem that so they can be doing more pump out, meaning selling cars outside their market, than suffering from pump in. Phone message to get the appointment. I've got an idea to help STEM pump in. Yes, utilize it. Every dealer knows what pump in and pump out is. Um, hey, I wanted to let you know that I have several great proven strategies that are measurable that can help stem pump in in your market and make you the pump out king of the area. Excellent. Thank you. Great stuff, Pat. So let's head back over to our service center with more from Jim and John. I, I'm still laughing at the Wild West commercial. You can't yeah. pick stupid. <laughs> Some great ideas. You know, uh, Jenny in Phoenix uh, is saying, look, if the battle is now on the web, why do dealers need a big city location? Well, I, mean, that's, I think that's the point of what we were talking about. I, I, uh, I got turned on to this by a dealer, and uh, he was a little bit outside of the metro, and one day he said to me, he said, look, um, 20 years ago, people picked up the phone or they went to the dealership. Today, they go online. He said, I don't need to buy the million dollar piece of property next on Automotive Row. I can build a presence that's gonna win that. So look, everyone watching this is under pressure to do more new business than ever. I think an interesting place to prospect for new business is in those dealers that are outside of the metro. I think you can find some good opportunities there, both in new and in used. You know, Google says that the average car shopper will drive about 32 miles to go look for a new car. That's, that's about the average drive, so some more, some less. Uh, there are ways that you can build a commercial with a car dealer that says uh, this isn't too far. So, in other words, if it's 30 minutes from my door to the car dealer uh, to go make a purchase, why wouldn't the dealer say something like, we're only 10 minutes from the city center? That's a lot less than a half hour from my door to the car dealer. So there are multiple different ways to, to make this longer drive a little shorter, at least in the creative, right? Yeah, and if you go back over the history of the last 10 or 15 years of television, there's always been successful uh, dealers who have used TV who are outside of the metro. Now it's actually easier because now where the uh, point of contact is is to a website uh, and not to um, the dealer's location. Uh, increasingly, when I'm doing live seminars, I'll ask the audience, how many of you have completed the transaction for a car and not been to the dealership? That was something that you never would have believed could happen 10 years ago, now happens all the time. I'm pumped, I'm getting yeah. some good, so how about the audience here? You guys liking what you're hearing today and make some money off this? Uh, look, we got a lot more show to go, so hang loose, we're going in for a 10 minute uh, break, uh, video will continue to roll, we'll have the countdown numbers so you don't miss a second. We will start in another 10 minutes sharp where we get started with Tom and Pat in the showroom with, the showroom with essentials number four. Good stuff. All right. Ann Fowler with Jim Doyle & Associates here. I snuck into the studio to tell you about our 25 days of Christmas sale. For the next 25 days, we're offering 25% off everything in our JDA store. It's our biggest sale of the year on every tool in our online store. Go to jimdoyle.com and click on store for 25% off revenue producing products like Doyle On Demand, Sales Manager's High Performance Boot Camp, 
the Leader's Edge Management Coaching Program, and all of our books and publications. So while you're shopping online, don't forget to add your sales team and clients to your shopping list for Jim Doyle and Associates teaching and revenue development gifts that will pay off all year long. It's easy. Just go to jimdoyle.com and click on the store. When you check out, enter the promo code HOLIDAY and 25% will come right off your purchases. And are you giving away the store again? Well, John, everybody deserves to be more profitable in 2018. Pro profit, pro profit, yes, yes they do. At Jim Doyle & Associates, we make your money. And we make you better. Go to jimdoyle.com and click on store right, right now. now. Hey, John Hannon here of Jim Doyle & Associates. If you are a TV manager at any organization, I have a question for you. Are we gonna see you in January? Specifically, is our leadership team going to get the chance to interact with you this January in Tampa at the 2018 Jim Dolan Associates Sales Managers High Performance Boot Camp? I am so excited today to share with you some of the speakers that we've acquired for this two and a half day career changing event. On Sunday you're going to hear from retired Lieutenant Colonel Rob Waldo Waldman. His presentation, Never Fly Solo, comes from his background as a fighter pilot for the U.S. Air Force. He's going to translate business opportunities, business experience, and his fighter pilot experience on the stage right before you to help you understand how to go back and empower your team to achieve levels never thought possible. On Monday, you're going to hear from Colette Carlson. In Colette's presentation, The Power of Connection and Leadership, she helps you understand it's not necessarily the medium or the tone, it's the connection that you make with individuals that make you successful and that make you an effective manager to help your sellers. And on Tuesday, you're going to hear from Sam Richter. Sam Richter's presentation, Every Yes Begins With a No, is going to blow your mind. He's going to teach you how to do things like add a quotation or a hash mark to somebody's name when you're searching for them on Google to find information you never thought possible. Isn't that what sales is about? Knowledge and executing on that knowledge, and that's what Sam is going to provide for you. I got to tell you, Sales Manager's High Performance Boot Camp many, many years ago for me was a career changer. In fact, I was an attendee before I became president of Jim Doyle & Associates. We can't wait to see you there. Can we count on you? It's the 2018 version of Jim Doyle & Associates Sales Manager's High Performance Boot Camp. It's January, it's in Tampa. If you're in a cold state, what better place to be than Florida in the sun and fun when you're beating the winter blues. For Jim Doyle & Associates, I'm John Hannon. On behalf of all of our team, we hope to see you there in January. John Hannon here, excited to reveal to you Doyle On Demand version 6.0. In 90 seconds, you'll see five key enhancements and a slick new look that makes it even easier to use. Number one, it's now super mobile friendly. You can use it from any device and the screen adjusts based on the device you're holding. Why not give it a try in the parking lot of your next client stop? In just three to four minutes, you'll be armed and ready to have a true business conversation that earns you the right to come back with a strategy that gets results and gets renewed. Number two, the main menu has an all new look. The carousel is now controlled by clicking and dragging. Number three, icons have been modernized. Search is improved. You can receive new content messages by simply clicking on the bullhorn. Access the training center right here. Favorites and notes are found with this icon. Number four, drop down is easier to use. Here, you'll see your reports and you're going to love the new help button, which now takes you directly to the JDA help desk. And finally, number five, courses in the training center are now as easy to access as streaming a movie. 
it's neatly organized by categories, courses, and chapters. And now we can add group exclusive content into the Training Center. Simply click here to go back to the main menu. Take a look around or simply click here to dive into the Training Center. Don't have Doyle On Demand yet? What are you waiting for? Learn more about our nation's premier teaching platform. It's taken the industry by storm and it's allowing stations like yours to close hundreds of thousands in local direct dollars. Get Doyle On Demand today. Contact Ann Fowler at our JDA World Headquarters for your tour of Doyle On Demand. Uh, the boot camp here has just been a tremendous opportunity to, to learn and grow and, and develop relationships and that's really what we're all here for is to create a team that is on fire that can create new business and drive demand and this is a wonderful opportunity for anyone that's looking for that vision to be able to come here and achieve it. Energy at boot camp is fantastic, and ma the main reason is being able to meet such great people, along with the staff here at uh, Jim Doyle and Associates. Being able to meet and, and talk to some great people and ideas really makes boot camp a special event. The best part's probably the interaction with all of the other local sales managers that are here. Um, Jim and Tom and all the guys are very good at prompting ideas and then allowing all of us in the crowd to kind of interact with each other and come up with ideas and new things that we hadn't thought of before. So this is giving me new energy, uh, just mingling with the peers here and kind of commiserating a little with everyone, but also sharing some amazing ideas. And it's just been an incredible experience and helping me to be excited and passionate again about what I love to do. It's really eye-opening to be out here with the people that are on the ground, with other sales managers across the country. And Jim Bell's brought some really great speakers in. Uh, you know, it's just, it's just been really eye-opening for me to see what's going on across the country and what's working in other markets and the things that's going on in our industry. It's really motivating. Uh, Jim continues to have, you know, up-to-date, pertinent insight uh, relevant to our everyday job and our long-term outlook. So uh, it's been a great experience so far. God, I, I, this is my second boot camp and the, uh, the speakers here are top class. It's always, I always get a great inspiration from Jim, uh, Tom, John, the speakers that they bring are incredible. And I always enjoy uh, seeing all the folks and, and just uh, staying updated on some of the things that you just kind of forget when you stay day to day doing the job. It's kind of nice to be able to get out of the office and sit back and reflect on what we do. For me, it's all about building up a team and making us stronger, and those are, the, those are the things that I'm writing down at the moment, or the things that I can do to step up our game to the next level. Boot camp is just amazing. It's terrific networking opportunities with so many other stations across the country, and there are so many ideas that you can take back and immediately implement to either change the culture, to improve things at your own station, and to increase revenue. Ann Fowler with Jim Doyle & Associates here. I snuck into the studio to tell you about our 25 days of Christmas sale. For the next 25 days, we're offering 25% off everything in our JDA store. It's our biggest sale of the year on every tool in our online store. Go to jimdoyle.com and click on store for 25% off revenue producing products like Doyle On Demand, Sales Manager's High Performance Boot Camp, the Leader's Edge Management Coaching Program, and all of our books and publications. So while you're shopping online, don't forget to add your sales team and clients to your shopping list for Jim Doyle and Associates teaching and revenue development gifts that will pay off all year long. It's easy. Just go to jimdoyle.com and click on the store. When you check out, enter the promo code HOLIDAY and 25% will come right off your purchases. And are you giving away the store again? Well, John, everybody deserves to be more profitable in 2018. Profit, profit, pro profit. yes, yes they do. At Jim Doyle & Associates, we make your money. And we make you better. Go to jimdoyle.com and click on store right, right now. now. <laughs> well, welcome back. Can you believe how fast 10 minutes goes? I'm certain that everyone is sitting in your seat right now. We interrupted ready our for show for commercials. That's it. <laughs> we, are, we, yeah. we are in the sales business. Uh -huh. uh, you might notice we have a third, uh, a third face on set that you didn't see before. Uh, we have grabbed Heather right out of the audience from WTSP here in Tampa, 
who, who has a question that she would like to ask uh, on the stuff that we've already covered. So yeah. go ahead, Heather, if you want. Well, so Jim, there's um, even more ability for people to do a lot of research online now about the cost of cars, and we've heard a lot about how the dealers aren't making as much money on new cars anymore. So I was wondering, is it just as important for us to t be talking to our dealers about used vehicles, or should we talk to them about both, and, and which one do they make more money on these days? Well, a couple of questions there, and we've got some content on that in, the, I think, the back half of the show. But let me just try to directly uh, answer the question as, as much as I can. Dealers clearly make more money on used than new, way more money on new, on used. And so used is important for every uh, dealership's operation. From a marketing point of view, that decision that I'm going to make about new or used is going to be a function of a lot of factors around the marketplace. For example, uh, we're in Tampa St. Pete, very competitive, lots of dealers within a marketplace. So if I'm a Ford dealer, a Chevy dealer, one of the top five, chances are I'm going to focus my advertising on new in those markets. That's because I'm in a real market share battle with my competitors. And I'll let used uh, work in other ways, but my traditional media, I'm probably going to spend more on that. If I'm a high-end import dealer where there's only two Mercedes dealers in this market and I know I'm going to get my traffic, then I may spend a lot of my money on my certified pre-owned programs and that might be the most profitable use. So uh, it's one of those typical consultant answers, you know, like on the one hand and on the other hand, which qualifies me to run for governor uh, soon. So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we are off questions already, and just by way of reminder, uh, if you have a question uh, as you're viewing today, the bottom of the screen, simply answer your question uh, and, and hit submit, and we'll answer it here on, at the service desk. How about we get back right to the action with the money makers, uh, Tom and Pat, live in the showroom with essential number four. Well, Pat, one of the areas that uh, we've all lost budget to for a number of years now are those third-party lead providers, the autotraders.com, the cars.com, KBB True Cars. Uh, you're familiar uh, with uh, all these third-party uh, uh, lead providers and countless others um, that want to partner with our local dealers. Um, uh, tell me about uh, uh, third-party lead providers. Well, Tom, bottom line is that the third-party lead providers continue to grow exponentially, including many of the names that you mentioned here as well. What's the allure of the third-party lead provider to our dealers? Uh, why are dealers spending so much money there? Uh, there's a couple reasons. Number one, Tom, dealers believe these are low-funnel, low-hanging fruit opportunities. The thought process is that, hey, if I go to cars.com to look at a 2016 F-150, I'm probably fairly serious about looking at buying a uh, 2016 F-150. Second reason is these third-party lead providers are getting much better at being able to track and give the data to show that they are, in fact, drawing opportunities to the dealer. And I think there's a big reason here, too. They're recruiting car people. You know, they're going in and buying, getting people that have been in the dealership. They know the space. They know the language. They know how it works. In fact, many of them have come right off the showroom floor to go work for Autotrader, Cars.com, Kelly Blue Book, and a whole number of others. Yeah, I certainly understand that. You know, I would guess that just about every AE watching today has lost some budget to the third-party lead providers. Well, we asked our dealers uh, how they felt about third-party lead providers moving forward, and their answers may be encouraging. Let's give a listen. We probably scaled back on the third party lead providers. The, the reality is the, the best quality leads with the lowest cost per lead, lowest cost per sale, and highest closing rate and highest return are always going to be web or leads that we generate from our own website. So with that in mind, any type of solution that we can do to drive traffic directly to our dealership website is almost always going to be the best solution to include a video marketing solution drive tra to drive traffic there. When we go out to third party solutions, whether it's a third party aggregator or perhaps buying third party leads from the manufacturer, uh, it's usually going to be a lower quality lead where there's a lot more competition because the other dealers are involved in it. It's going to be more difficult to sell, a higher cost per lead, a higher cost per sale, and because of the competition, a lower return on the deal. I'm involved with uh, some third-party lead providers. Uh, you know, um, I've got my, you know, uh, doubts about the effectiveness of any of them, to be honest about it, you know, because it seems that people are not, you know, engaging, you know, and, and, and allowing us to be able to capture the information that we need to make those leads really valid. So the conversion is starting to really be, you know, a little bit more challenging than what I think it should be. 
If you build your brand strong enough, you can kind of get away from those third parties. But, you know, that's something that I think each dealer really needs to uh, take into consideration for their own. Well, in the past, we've referred to them as bandits and pirates. Uh, many of our dealers are planning on cutting back, as we just heard. Pat, uh, should we attack these, these third-party budgets? Well, Tom, it's kind of interesting because dealers have a love-hate relationship with their third-party vendors. You know, we just talked to a couple of guys that are pretty sour on third-party vendors, but I can talk to just as many dealers that are big believers in third-party vendors, so it's a lot of who you really talk to. Um, what's funny, an interesting dynamic is I go around the country, I go into one market and they tell me cars.com rocks and auto trader is lousy. I go into the next market, they tell me auto trader rocks and cars.com doesn't bring the bank for the buck, but regardless, there's still a lot of money being spent with third-party providers. Yeah, there sure is. So uh, walk us through the math, please. All right. Third-party lead providers offer their own analytics and reports, and basically 50% of dealers say they don't believe the information anyway. So they look at their CRM tool data in order to determine if they're really getting the ROI that they want or don't want. Um, so this is how it works effectively. So the dealer's CRM automatically tags leads. So let's say you're a consumer. You're on Auto Trader and you click on the dealer's link from Auto Trader. You're then tagged as an Auto Trader lead. However, the interesting dynamic is you may have been on Cars and Car Grooves and KBB and a whole number of other sites, but the CRM, much like Google Analytics, only captures the last action that the customer did. So help us understand the difference between you, you words, used words like prospects and leads. Define those. All right. So. Think of it as a sales funnel at the end of the day. Um, how many people are prospects? Prospects would be those that are on, let's say, the auto trader site, looking at the vehicles that you've posted there. A lead then becomes when they've clicked, clicked over from auto trader to the dealer's website and they've taken some other action or a conversion, as it's called. They've filled out a form, they've had a chat session, uh, they've done something that asks for more information. They become a lead then that lead becomes a sale once those people actually go through and purchase a vehicle and they can match up the data of where the lead came from to the fact that they actually uh, bought a vehicle from the dealership. And that's really the dealer measuring, so how much money did I make from an auto trader, for example, versus how much did I invest, and that's their true ROI. All right, so walk us through an example. Okay. Let's take a look and say a dealer spends $5,000 a month to put cars on autotrader.com. Now, these vehicles generate 100 prospects or peoples that view, people that viewed them on the auto trader site. Of those 100 prospects that came over and looked at the dealership, 15 of them converted for more action. They filled out a form, check, chat session, or something along those lines. Let's say the dealer closed 20% of those leads. Now that all comes down to three sales. Mm -hmm. Let's say this dealer has an average gross profit per used vehicle of $2,500. So $2,500 times three vehicle sales is $7,500 in gross profit on a $5,000 investment. So the question the dealer has to ask themselves is that return on investment, that $7,500 versus a $5,000 investment, a strong enough ROI to justify the spend on Auto Trader in this particular example? What would most dealers say to that for that? that formula. They'd say it's lousy yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day. In fact, the dealer is saying that minimum two times and most dealers are going to want to see three to five times that opportunity yeah. uh, for whatever they spend in advertising as a rule of thumb. Yeah, but there's lots of variables involved. Well, there's lots of variables. First of all, it's the quality of the vehicles. I mean, are they putting on high mile vehicles that are overpriced for the site that they're on? A really huge factor is what's the sales process. Once that lead or information is generated at the dealership, what happened to it? That's one of the questions I always ask. If I sent you a lead, how would you handle it? And you find some great processes and some horrible ones. So it comes down to the sales staff and a whole bunch of other variables that can affect the ROI for a particular lead source. And what we've learned throughout our research for today's event is they are making the third-party lead providers, I'm talking about, dramatic improvements in measurement. Well, 
this is where it's getting really interesting. These third-party providers are really upping their game when it comes to tracking. Uh, just last month, I attended the Automotive Analytics and Attribution Summit, and Cars.com at this meeting made this announcement. Basically what they said is they were going to partner with Vista Dash to bring more visibility and transparency to consumers that are engaging on their site. And here's what that means. It means these third party vendors and their various partners are now sharing their data and tracking the multiple points the customers are touching before they come to the dealership. And what does that mean for us in this industry? It means that we better get a whole lot better at being able to track and show the effect our traditional advertising has on the consumer journey to buy a vehicle from a dealer. Yeah, so there are differing opinions on the value of third party leads, but there is one thing on which all dealers can agree. Well, you know, obviously my best lead comes from somebody that's actually been on my website. The reality is the, the best quality leads with the lowest cost per lead, lowest cost per sale, and highest closing rate and highest return are always going to be web or leads that we generate from our own website. So with that in mind, any type of solution that we can do to drive traffic directly to our dealership website is almost always going to be the best solution. To include a video marketing solution drive tra to drive traffic there. You know, leads that come directly to your website, I mean, those are your highest closing ratios. Those are your best high quality leads. Typically speaking, those close, um, you know, in the neighborhood of 30%. So they're very high quality leads. Well. Our message is and always has been, we can help you drive traffic directly to your own website and those are your best leads. Well, what the, cus the customer is saying, I've picked you. I choose you to give you my uh, best opportunity to sell me a car. I mean, let's face it, consumers only physically visit less than two brick and mortar stores. They're kicking tires online at the end of the day. So therefore, that dealer's website better stand tall. Also, I want to share with you some effective creative that uses television to drive leads directly to the dealer's website. Let's take a look. Click on the address that guarantees Toyota value and honest answers. ToyotaReportsmouth.com. Skip those national auto websites and shop directly with us. The House of Value on Route 1 in Portsmouth. And the House of Value online at ToyotaReportsmouth.com. Right, boys? Skip the national sites. That's, that's pretty direct. Uh, Pat, what are the action steps here? Well, a couple things, Tom. First of all, find out if your dealer is a believer in third-party leads. I mean, are you spending money on third-party leads? How much? And ask, is it working for you? Are you tracking the ROI for those different uh, third-party lead sources? In, in 2018, will you spend more money or less money on third-party leads or about the same? Help them do the math. Help them walk through the conversion to ultimately the sale to see if there's an ROI justification. And also have them question their vendors. Since 50% don't believe the information, question if they believe their third-party uh, lead information. And always, always, always get to the question, where do you think your best leads come from? Because every dealer is going to say the best leads come from our sites. And then what do you want to do? Bring them strong creative that drives them to the website. All right. Great stuff, Pat. Lots of actionable items there. Now it's time to head back over to the service desk with Jim and John. You know, Jim, at the risk of repeating ourselves year after year after year, I have to ask the question for everyone viewing, is the dealer's website site still the best lead? Without a doubt, every dealer uh, that I've ever spoken to, every dealer that Pat uh, or others on our team have spoken to says the same thing. When a lead comes to our site, it closes at a higher percentage and it closes for higher gross. And I want to just say there's another piece of this whole third party lead deal, which uh, we need to be really focused on as we have our conversations with dealers. And that is, if you look at uh, what shows up when I, when I search for a two year old F-150 pickup, it's going to be the lowest price ones first. And so all of a sudden, you know, they say price doesn't count anymore. Well, then how come it's the lowest price ones on the site? And then you move down and down and down. And dealers will tell you all the time, if you're on the second page, you're invisible. So they're constantly almost adjusting their prices, sometimes on a nightly basis, to get back up into that top position. So um, it's a critical piece. So that's why there's a low profitability on the third party lead provider stuff. And I think what Pat talks about, which is trying to get into a conversation that begins to have the conversation about the math, is really, really helpful. 
We just watched a bunch of smart guys on video state that they're planning to cut down on the dollars they're investing or spending in third party lead providers. Is it likely that they're going to cut the same amount across the board or are they going to get rid of some providers wholesale? If I had to guess, I'd say they're going to get rid of providers wholesale because one of the things that digital accountability gives us is the opportunity to say this one performs way better than that one. I'm going to double down on the ones that are performing well and get rid of the ones uh, that don't feed strength and starve weakness. So then a smart account executive would then say to the dealer, which one is not working? and I bet I can take that money and make it work for you. Smart account executive might even also say which one's not working and how can we use some of our digital assets to bring a high profit lead to your site? Perfect. Well, uh, through the magic of television, we're gonna transport Jim Doyle over to the showroom where he's gonna cover <laughs> gotta essential get over there. <laughs> number five. How many seconds is, do I have for this? <laughs> uh, starting now. <laughs> All right. You were the marathon runner, remember? Uh, essential number five, general to general. You're going to love this section. So this is one section of this conference that I wanted to personally deliver um, because I think it is an essential uh, action step that we need to make. And so I want to talk uh, for just a minute to the bosses that are in the room. And if your bosses aren't in the room, uh, I would encourage you to make sure they watch this part of the conference when we post it online. And I have to say, and obviously I can't say to the bosses, I can't tell you to do anything, uh, a little bit like when my kids were younger when they would say, you're not the boss of me. Uh, I understand that. But I cannot begin to tell you how important I think this section is for our bosses to hear and to take action. So for the bosses, there's two things that you need to understand. Number one, um, the agenda for last year's NADA conference was striking to me. That's the dealer conference that so many of your dealers go to every February. Um, and you see some of the titles of presentations up there. Uh, I think at one point we counted there were over 300 presentations in that conference uh, that were some form of digital or digital marketing. And guess how many um, conference sessions at NADA talked about TV or cable? Well, there, there were a couple and obviously some uh, people in our business who exhibited there, but uh, not very many. We couldn't even hardly find a one. Um, so we sent Pat Norris to the Digital Dealer Conference. Uh, so they talk about traditional media there, but you know what they're saying? The message is you need less and less of that because of all these great digital tools. So um, whose job is it? to keep our dealers sold on the power of our products. And I'll give you a hint. It's not the salesperson from cars.com. They're not going to do that. We have to do that. And we can't hope, in the midst of all this change, we can't hope uh, that they're going to stay sold, especially when they're continuing to get the message from their factories and from these conferences that perhaps we're not as important to their business as we once were. I uh, love the business line that says, hope is not a business plan. Um, hope is not a business plan. I, I, I think we can't just hope that this doesn't change. So I'm begging all of the top uh, uh, you know, leaders that are watching this, we've got to get to the decision makers and deliver a why us uh, presentation. Why us TV? Why us cable? Why our digital and owned and operated platforms? And this can't be a social visit. Uh, you know what, there's nothing wrong with social visits, but uh, uh, it's really important that on a formal basis, at least once a year right now, we sit down and try to present the power of our story. And we've given you, uh, we think, a lot of tools in this conference to help that. Uh, and we think, as we've mentioned, that getting dealers, if we can get access to their Google Analytics, or if we can get them to look at um, the correlation between their analytics and uh, their usage of our uh, products, that's powerful um, because it can make our results more tangible and more proven. But I say again, they're never going to hear that story from the salesperson from cars.com or from AutoTrader. It has to come from us. And here's why it has to be the bosses, the GMs and GSMs that do that. Um, it's because of the change that's going on in the automobile business. There, you know, there's a line that we use in our uh, upgrade selling training that says generals talk to generals. 
Um, and, you know, a general manager at a TV station or cable company can get a lot of phone calls returned, calls that no one else can get answered. Uh, but that's really important to the car business right now. Consolidation isn't just a word impacting our business. It's impacting lots of industries. And, of course, the car business has been hugely consolidated over the last couple of years. More and more stores uh, impacted and run by, you know, fewer dealers. Uh, our home office is in Sarasota, so uh, I've been around that market for a long time. If you went to Sarasota 15 to 20 years ago, there were probably 15 different owners of car dealerships. Relatively small town. Uh, only a couple of dealers owned more than one store. Most of the dealers just owned one. And they played a lot of golf, and they were very accessible uh, to see them. And some of the uh, older people in our audience, we, we made our careers calling on that dealer. Well, today in Sarasota, we've got maybe five owners, a couple of them headquartered out of state. We have one dealer in town who owns nine or ten different uh, rooftops. Uh, that guy controls a lot of money. Um, and, you know, sometimes his GMs would have a, a, a vote in that for sure. Uh, but the real decision maker, capable of moving $100,000 or more after he goes to NADA in February, is just one dealer. And that person has to be the target. And there are other key decision makers within the organization. And again, don't make it a social call. We have to make sure these people are absolutely sold. The message you need to deliver, it is not how well we're doing in the ratings. It's not about the power. Uh, it is about the power of our products uh, to sell and help them sell cars. It's about a word that Tom Ray created, uh, the word tradigital, which is the marriage of digital advertising with traditional. We believe, and we hope we showed today through the Google Analytics we showed, that that is the power combination. The power of traditional media married with the digital opportunities. Use success stories from other parts of the country. Use the analytics that we shared, those two slides uh, that we had to stimulate them using their analytics. And use some of the videos as a way to present uh, that story to them. Uh, and always ask, how can we serve you better? In those meetings, we suggest you ask what their perception is of the impact of their advertising that they're doing with you today and any other advertising they're doing on your other platforms. And listen, listen very carefully to the answer. So what if you're a GM that uh, may not be comfortable selling? Maybe you've come from news or uh, don't uh, feel comfortable in that role. Uh, that's okay. I get that. Um, but don't use that as a reason not to do this meeting. Uh, pick up the phone and get the appointment, and then bring someone with you, one of your great, talented sales managers, to, to really do the presentation. But don't skip this step. And at the end of this show, we're going to show a, a very compelling uh, case for TV, uh, 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 another video from Brad uh, Sider at TVB. Um, but, you know, that information is useless if we don't get it to the right people. And here is TVB's Brad Sider. We encourage the general manager and the GSM, all sales management should have a relationship with the dealer because as a business leader, and a business leader being you're running a business at the station, they're also a business leader, the owner of the dealer. So the two should have a connection. They should have a relationship and we encourage that. Obviously the, the closer the relationship is between the station and the dealership, the more they're gonna view the station as a resource. At the start of this show, I, uh, I said, this is not our typical pattern. I mean, we don't do shows where we say you have to do this. So why now? Well, uh, as you can probably tell, we're pretty nervous about this category. And I don't think we can take this dealer revenue for granted. Uh, they're not hearing our story from anyone. So don't play ostrich. Don't, that's the head in the sands, just hoping these dealers uh, keep spending. We have to keep these dealers sold. Uh, final thought for our leaders, if you do everything right and your dealer money goes away, you've got challenges. So I beg you to take action. Now back to the uh, service center, service desk. You know, wow, how'd that happen? <laughs> He's back. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, I, I want to flip the script for just a minute before I get to a follow-up question I have for you on, on what you stated in the showroom. 
I, I need each of you viewing uh, the folks in the audience here, uh, the sellers, the folks that are out there, feet on the street, to be honest with yourself. When is the last time you went to the leader of your, your station, your general manager, and you said to, to he or she, uh, can you go with me on this call? When is the last time? I think too many times we may have heard no because of a schedule and we think, well, they never want to go with us so we don't go back. So whose fault is that? Sometimes the best, the best accountability tool is a mirror, but I, I need you to be honest with yourself when this program ends. Have I made an effort to get the decision maker at my location in front of the decision maker at my most important automotive clients? A and that request, again, uh, by what Jim said a little earlier, is not a social visit. It is a business discussion. It's not a golf outing. It is a business discussion. It's not a lunch. It is a business discussion. I can't be any, any more uh, clear with that statement because this is an opportunity for the decision maker to talk general to general and say to that auto dealer, I want to leverage the power of my stick, the power of my digital products, the power of our, our, our employees to grow your business. That's 100% different than what they're hearing from your competitors. That's where this relationship has to go. Jim? Yeah, and I, I think that, uh, uh, look, uh, most of the people watching this uh, have dealers that are uh, handled by advertising agencies. And yet the key thing is we've got to have a relationship at the dealer level. Um, and, and you know what, as an AE, uh, I can't do that, um, but the bosses can. And it starts probably before we pick up the phone and ask for this meeting. Uh, but they'll take a meeting from the top people. Um, let's not squander those opportunities when we get them. Absolutely. And, you know, and sometimes I'll borrow a Pat Norris line who said uh, most of these folks in the market who won't talk to account executives have a PhD. Papa had a dealership, right? So they have their own business <laughs> card, which has got 15 different names on it that they name themselves. And because you don't have a business card that has that big, long title, they don't want to talk to you. So it may take the leverage of somebody in your stations with a much larger title to get that appointment. Uh, yeah. I want to come back to you, Jim, just real quickly on something you said. You alluded to maybe a general manager is a, is a uh, ex-news person. What if I'm an account executive here? I think this is the elephant on the table kind of secret question. What if I'm an account executive and I'm looking at my general manager and going, okay, that's a news general manager, not a sales general manager. I don't want to take him to my biggest dealer. Yeah. Uh, so uh, easy for me to say, we're the out-of-town experts and we don't have to sit in those meetings. So, you know, I, I think uh, the, the, the clearer way to handle it is just to say, do we believe, I think as a sales staff, that accessing the senior leadership of these dealerships is important? So if we answer that question and we say, yes, we believe that, okay, what is the best way, given the tools that we have and the people we have, to do that? Um, I think that a general manager can get an appointment. It may be that that general manager, uh, once the social uh, time is over in the first part of that meeting, uh, doesn't say much as somebody carries the ball to make the presentation. And I love what Tom and Pat have done with this conference to provide you with the tools and the video to do that. Um, you can walk in today and have a very robust discussion based upon what you've learned about that dealership and insert not your opinion, not your stuff, but what some of these experts have said, what other dealers have said. Um, such a powerful thing to bring. And I, I love that that's the way this conference is organized because I think it's right for these times. And, and I would give you a, a little bit of confidence uh, back to the news, uh, the news example that we're talking about here. If a general manager is a little hesitant to go out on a sales call because they have a news background and they think, gosh, I'm not a salesperson, the reality is some of the best marketing discussions have come from ex-news people. Yeah. You know why? Because they know how to interview. So I would say that to the general manager, look, I need your interviewing skills. I need yeah. you to help me peel information off that I can't get from this individual to make us uh, in a position to help this, this uh, dealership. So please, come with me. Yeah, I, can I just add one thing? I know we're uh, pressed for time. Sure. Um, you know, we uh, take an important, anytime there's an important thing, we, we pre-recorded the beginning of today's session because it was so important to get that right. Just, just to say, this is what we want to present to you today. Um, don't make a presentation, probably ever, but certainly uh, when you've got an opportunity to be in front of a major spender in that marketplace without having rehearsed that and talked about that beforehand. Well, I, now that you've given away our trade secrets, <laughs>
Uh, I guess we'll swing back to the showroom, which is about 10 feet that way. All right, over there. I don't have to, <laughs> to run this time. <laughs> to see Pat and Tom with some aha moments. Well, every year that we do uh, these types of events, we uncover some surprising insights in all the research and interviews that we do. And uh, this year was no different. We're going to call these our aha moments and we're going to share rapid fire here uh, pretty quickly. Some of the things that we uncovered. Pat, uh, one of the questions that we always anticipate when we do an automotive event is what about co-op? Well, I'm going to make the assumption everyone understands that co-op are rebated dollars for advertising from the manufacturer to the dealer. And it's based on the number of cars the dealer purchases. So it ebb and flows all year. Dealer buys more cars, more co-op, less cars, less co-op. Mm -hmm. And where can they spend that money? Well, there's very specific areas in covenants that they must perform in order to get that money, but right now the big push is digital. In fact, uh, just a few years ago, Ford mandated that 50% of co-op dollars must be spent on uh, a digital. And of course, they're always trying to push their manufacturer approved digital vendors down their throat because don't let it be, uh, uh, don't be fooled by the fact that that isn't a profit center for the manufacturers mm, for it. the kickbacks they get from those vendors. So here's my question for you. Uh, did the dealers ever spend outside of their co-op allotment? How about like three to four times at least, Tom? Mm -hmm. More sometimes. Yeah, in fact, let's hear from the dealers that we talked to. I see, you know, co-op monies not being there to allow you to maintain an ad budget, but they're there to allow you to grow it. They allow you th that co-op money is there for you to be able to grow your sales, not just to maintain, you know, the same sales rate that you may have been tracking over the past year or so. So I always exceed my co-op fund. Yeah, we always blow way past our, our, our uh, co-op spend. Um, you know, you have to. Um, you know, you got you to gotta spend money um, to make money. There's no, there's no uh, business in the world where you can sit back and, and save your way into being profitable. So, Pat, when a dealer says to an AE, I've already spent my co-op, what are they really it's, saying? It's just a smoke screen. It's a brush off. They spend three to four times their co-op typically. Mm -hmm. So, uh, while we're in the area here, what's the rule of thumb on budgeting, Pat? Uh, keeping it simple, $500 per car sold is a good rule. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's what Dale Early told us. Let's listen to Dale. You know, $500 a car normally allows for you still to be able to stay relatively aggressive with the market and uh, not uh, you know, overspend, but you need to make sure whatever you're doing that is done you know, uh, efficiently and you can be able to track some kind of return on investment. Okay, Pat, so don't let co-op be an objection anymore. No, in fact, Tom, when I'm doing my timeout calls with an auto dealer, I don't even have the conversation about co-op because one, I know they get it. Two, it ebbs and flows all year. The majority spend three to four times their co-op dollars. So the real goal is to bring a good, strong, creative uh, st strategy so that they can sell more cars. If you do that, they'll spend the money. Got it. All right. Well, Pat, we heard from top 50 dealer Kevin Fry at the Jeff Weiler Auto Group earlier today. He said video is the number one most influential tool to a dealer to persuade an automotive shopper. That's pretty powerful stuff. And we've been saying it for years, video, video, video. Can you be their video expert? They already look at you. The dealer already looks at you, the account executive, as the video expert. Well, we have the opportunity to talk to Andrew Myers. You heard from her, him a little bit earlier today. Andrew Meyer's company is called What's Next, and they only deal with auto dealers, and they uh, supply a full suite of video opportunities for them. Let's listen to our video automotive expert, Andrew Myers. Dealers look at the blank page of being able to create any videos they want, and it terrifies them. So if I'm an account executive, 
I'm telling them I know what needs to be made. I can show you other dealers that are using this exact content that I'm recommending that you use and I can show you exactly the results that you can expect if you use it. To me, that's the argument because that's what I can believe as a dealer you offer me that my ad agency can't by working uniquely with me on every problem individually for the first time. So I would lend on my overall buying power, my overall size, and let the dealer know there is a right way to do this, and that's what I'm trying to sell you. I'm not a muralist. I'm not gonna come and paint whatever you want on the front of the store. For me, I think it's important to send the message that I can customize, I can, I can work with you on any ideas you have, but there is a best practice for this. And because of my size and the R&D and the time and the energy that we put in as an organization, I can bring you straight to that process and we won't have to feel around in the dark. So that's the greatest thing that will sell and motivate a dealer to invest in video. It's true and it's the greatest advantage that an account executive has with the bigger organization behind them. Uh, so for me, that's the, the first and only angle to take with a dealer. They know they need this content. All you need to do is convince them that you have access to the content that they need, and most importantly, that you know exactly how to use that content. So all they have to do is, I, I use this uh, expression with dealers all the time, is lean back in that big leather chair, sign the agreement, and we'll take over, and you know that it'll happen right. So to me, dealers love that message. They're not afraid to buy content. They're afraid of what they're going to do with the content. You can't let it sound like buying video is like buying mannequins. You know, it, it can't sound wispy. It has to be, we understand the connection between what content you need to make, what ads you need to be running, and how these content and these ads are gonna pair well together. So Andrew's advice, take control. Uh, let the dealer know that you're there for their video needs in uh, more than just in the way of 30s and 10s uh, and help dealers with their other video elements. Okay, Pat, uh, time for you to tell us what you learned at that Automotive Analytics and Attribution Summit. Well, it was a really cool thing to attend, Tom, and learned a lot. Um, first of all, there were 100 plus auto dealers there, GMs, digital sales directors, and a number of, of presenting and attending digital vendors. If there was one strong theme throughout the conference, it was who sold it. It was all about attribution. Um, it's about the consumer touch points that they go through on their path to buying a vehicle before they ultimately end up on the dealership's website. And what dealers want to know now is what was that consumer's journey? Where did it start? What were the messages they saw? What did they consume? And what finally was that portal that referred them to the actual dealership site eventually? Now look, um, let me take a second. Um, I want to get real with all of you digital sales directors out there because I cannot emphasize this enough. It's no longer sufficient to tell your dealer, well, gosh, we got you 200,000 impressions and a 1.76% click-through rate. It just doesn't work for them anymore. They expect more data and they expect more information so they can make more informed decisions to work with you. Got it. In fact, Steve White is our attribution expert. He was at the summit you attended. He refers to them as vanity metrics. Let's give a listen to Steve White. Vanity metrics would be click-through rate, cost per click, um, bounce rate. You know, metrics like that you will see typically being reported in, within Google Analytics. And you have to ask yourself, when was the last time uh, that the, the, the click-through rate was, could be correlated to an actual sale. So if you fall into the trap of using vanity metrics to define your success, you're falling you know, into the trap of, you know, of trying to compete against you know, AdWords. Um, and it, it's, just, it's, it's, not, it's a race to the bottom uh, in my mind in terms of trying to compete at that level. You have to uh, create new types of metrics uh, that, that Google can't compete with. Uh, and you know, the, the biggest metric that you can create is actually tying your media to an actual sale. And Google Analytics, as it relates to auto dealers, cannot measure uh, sales impact. So Pat, dealers are trying to get beyond clicks as a point of measurement? Well, clearly, in fact, it's called the myth of the last click. It's the last thing the consumer did before they went to the dealer's website, and that's what Google defaults to, unfair fight. In fact, here's our expert's opinion on the myth of the last click. The myth of the last click is that you're putting 100% of the credit uh, of the particular sale to that, to that last click or that last interaction. And to make matters worse, 
uh, everyone is, uh, or most people are using Google Analytics, and Google Analytics, the default setting is to give credit to that last click. And it, it benefits Google. Uh, there, there's no two ways about it, because when you think about what typically is that last click, is that, is that someone is going to Google and typing in the dealership name and clicking on either an ad or an organic listing. And so when that happens, uh, Google is getting credit. And so uh, Google has designed uh, a measurement system that is really geared uh, to, to benefit them. And so that is my, my big challenge, uh, I think, to, to, to different broadcast stations to you have to get a measurement strategy in place. You cannot be reliant upon solely upon Google Analytics because it is not going to work in your favor. The customer or the consumer has so many touch points before they get to a dealership's website or before they actually get to the dealership that the process of trying to stitch that all together in a meaningful analysis of consumer behavior is the next wave of analytics and it is the next wave of where we are going to continue to learn a lot about what the customer does. So that last click attribution is not really fair in almost any case because we all know that somebody can be introduced to your dealership via a billboard and then they can hear your commercial on radio and then they can go on AutoTrader or Cars.com or CarGurus or any one of these third-party sites and be exposed to your inventory. Maybe they click through to your website. Maybe then they see, they see a campaign of yours on Facebook. It is this multiple amounts of touch points or message influence that the consumer has that hopefully, ultimately pushes them in the direction of making a decision to buy a car at your dealership. All right, Pat, what's your analogy? <laughs> I, I call this the hangover effect, Tom. So you jump in your Uber ride, let's be clear about that, and you go out for a night in the town. So you start out by having a couple of beers, and then you get uh, stop for dinner and have a few glasses of wine, and well, let's have a little bit of brandy after wine, and wrap the night up with some good cognac. And of course, you get home the next morning, and you wake up, and you go, oh my God, I've got a hangover. I wish I hadn't had that last cognac. Well, it wasn't the cognac that gave you the headache or the hangover. It was all the things that led up to it at the end of the day. So the four hard conversion channels that dealers are measuring now are pretty much this. Phone calls, chat sessions, text messages, and form fills. Again, what's my trade worth, credit application, things along those lines. That's what dealers are measuring to find out if their campaign dollars are working. Mm -hmm. What's the bottom line then? Bottom line is the way dealers are measuring is changing dramatically. They look at Google Analytics as just being one tool to utilize amongst many others that are being made available to them. There's many companies out there that are bringing these really cool attribution tools tying that consumer's journey back to uh, the sale at the dealership. So what's it mean for us? I mean it's called the connected ecosystem. The different touch points, both traditional and digital, that leads to the sale. Okay. Certainly big changes occurring in measurement. And um, the other big trend that we saw, uh, and my big buzzword for the year, uh, Pat, is what I'm calling retention. Well. <laughs> Well, car dealerships have never been very good at retention. It was always the chase for the next new car customer at the end of the day. Uh, retention basically is just staying after and trying to encourage your current and past customers, those that maybe haven't been in for service for a year to come back in. In my days, it, we pretty much accomplished that through direct mail and emails as a rule of thumb. Yeah. Here's why I'm keyed into this, uh, this word retention. Uh, at that internet battle plan that I attended, uh, all the experts were all talking about this and what they kept saying is you're sitting on a gold mine of opportunity and I, I learned these <coughs> phrases, data mining and equity mining and it wasn't surprising that a month after that event I get an email from Automotive News as a subscriber that said, hey, be sure to download our new white paper, Retention No Longer Rocket Science Using Modern Technology to uh, increase retention. All right, so I talked to Chris Herman about that. That's where I met him was at that event about are dealers going to be shifting dollars away from their regular advertising budgets to focus more on some of these new retention tools. Listen to what he had to say. This is Chris Herman. Will dealers shift their spend or their marketing focus away from traditional messaging perhaps in the direction of retention based programs? I think the answer is yes. Um, and the reason why is dealers see that investment as pennies on the dollar uh, focused on maintaining 
their customers and continuing to enter into new sales transactions with their already huge customer base. Every dealer knows that they can do a significantly better job managing and maintaining the relationships that they've already entered into and that doing so is significantly less expensive and more effective than trying to bring new customers in all the time. That doesn't mean that they'll stop trying to bring new customers in, but dealers absolutely will continue to spend and shift their marketing dollars in the direction of improving the utilization of their database. Well, that's a pretty bold warning. Uh, Steve White has some advice for us though. Let's listen to Steve White. I don't think dealers do enough to uh, activate and mine their, their first party data. There are uh, a number of great tools and solutions out there that enable you to, to activate your first party data. Um, I think there's opportunities uh, from a display perspective to where you can advertise a display campaign only to your customers. Um, you, you of course can do that same thing in social media. So if I were a TV station, I would try to figure out a way to tap into that first party uh, data. Um, and so, you know, how, how do you create a solution that you can t help the dealer tap into their first party data and, and be able to advertise those, I think is, uh, is, would be a key takeaway, I think, for, for, um, for TV stations uh, going forward in 2018. Sounds like an opportunity, Pat. What's well, the challenge? But there's a challenge. The challenge is our dealers are very reluctant to give up their first party data. They've been burned too many times before. But I do know there are companies that can anonymize the data so a third party vendor could use it without getting the dealer's first party data. Okay, so maybe an opportunity with yeah, retention. Absolutely, there's forward. a solution there. All right, there's an opportunity, Pat, that you're certainly bullish about for 2018. <clears throat> and we kind of heard it in our questions uh, uh, right after intermission. Um, talk about the opportunity in used. Well, Tom, two major factors at play. Number one, uh, new car sales are expected to slow down. As Jim referenced earlier, uh, six months ago, it was anticipated that car sales would be off by a million. Of course, the hurricane had those effects, but that was regionalized. So car sales are expected to slow down. After eight record years, demand eventually wanes. The other factor is there's a tsunami of off-lease vehicles that continue to come back in the market. So when you have high supply, no more demand, it's going to push down used car prices, thus trade values, and that further depresses new car sales. Okay, so what's the opportunity for our AEs? Really simply, I'd, I'd get in and talk to your new car dealer about how they're going to market used cars in 2018, uh, specifically certified or CPO vehicles. These are later model, uh, later model vehicles, many of them off lease, that the dealer can certify. Uh, what that does with the manufacturers, it extends the warranty, often qualifies it for new car rates, and frankly, with this piling up of off lease cars, manufacturers will often put co-op dollars available available uh, to advertise CPO vehicles. And hey, at the end of the day, they're 30, 35% less than a new car. They're pretty good deals. Yeah, excellent. It's a good story. All right, uh, what about the independent used car dealer? Well, Tom, I, I think this is an awesome opportunity. It's almost always overlooked by our broadcast partners. And before I go into a market, I encourage that they set up you know, several of these. Um, I was in a very large market partner of ours, and uh, we were talking to several used car dealers that week. And when I asked the one used car dealer, how come you've never considered broadcast television? His answer was, because no one from the TV station ever came out to ask me to be on, on TV. But there's a couple other things that I really like. Number one, you can typically walk in and meet the owner at the independent used car store. You can get to the decision maker. And secondly, I find very often that they're spending just as much money as the new car dealers are at the end of the day. Okay, uh, what's your formula for approaching that used car dealer? Well, I typically ask, what's a good prospect? And so here's my formula to see if a used car dealer is a viable prospect. Number one, the typical independent used car dealer sells half their inventory each month at a profit of give or take about $2,500 per car. So let's take a dealer that has 50 cars in stock, which by the way, you can determine just by looking at their website, number one. Right. Don't be fooled because they have 20 cars up front because they may have 100 behind the, the, uh, the store in the bowling lot alley. Um, so if they're stocking 50, they're selling 25. 25 cars at $2,500 per copy is $62,500 in gross profit per month. Now, the average used car dealer will spend between 10 to 15% of that gross profit. 
that's six to nine thousand dollars a month when I went to school for a lot that just stocks 50 cars. And the other element I see is that they often need some help uh, with digital advertising. They're all doing some form of it, usually with the, uh, some other partner. But at the end of the day, they don't have the manufacturer support. They don't have you know National Auto Dealer Association. They don't have a lot of those things to support their digital efforts. All right, and in the independent use. Don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> Tom, I don't care if it's a dirt lot or pave lot, man. The, the money's all green, baby. <laughs> all, right. all green. All right. Well, TVB's Brad Sider has an excellent presentation that ties together powerful research connecting time spent plus customer influence to tell a great story for television. So I invited Brad to share that presentation with us. I'd like to present to you TVB's Brad Sider. Time spent and consumer influence equals media allocation. That's the strategy. How do we make it work? We back it up with third-party independent science. Nielsen every quarter measures all the video platforms. So what you're looking across is all the different platforms I can receive video. And then they break it down by demo. So across the top is the demo. And the reason why I call this a Mythbuster report is you're talking to a dealer and the dealer is putting more emphasis on a particular form of media where they think the consumer is at as opposed to where the consumer really is. If you look across the top, live television, the consumer in every single demo is far more likely to be watching traditional live television than they are watching video in any other form. We want them to have that one-two combination of on-air and digital, but we make on-air early morning news. Then when the consumer goes to work, because that's their demo, their demo, remember again, is 35 plus really, we see them at work, now prime time is digital. And everything we want them to do with digital, we condense to between the hours of nine to five. And then when they come home, we're back on television. So another way to look at time spent, this is the GFK study just in automotive. On every study you see that television is number one place the consumer spends the most time. But what that dealer will see is that there's a direct correlation between how much time a consumer spends with a particular medium and how they answer on an influence test. So remember our strategy. Our strategy says for that advertiser to grow, they need to spend their media where the consumer spends the most time and then where I can influence them the most. This is the automotive influence purchase funnel study. And they ask a very simple question to the automotive intender. So anybody in the market to buy a car or truck in the next six months or have purchased in the last six months said, what is your primary media influencer and your decision to purchase a car or truck. You can see across all five stages of the consumer decision process that television is by far and away the number one influencer to that consumer. Time spent directly correlates to how a consumer answers on an influence study. They're spending way more time with broadcast TV. And because of that, as an advertiser, I have way more opportunity to talk to you as, an adver as a consumer. And as a consumer, you're seeing way more of my advertising, sight, sound, motion, emotion, and the most powerful medium we have. And because of that, the consumer is answering that that particular medium influences me the most. This is from Kantar Media. This is how the OEM spends their money at the tier one level. And I love showing dealers how the, their manufacturer, their parent company, actually spends their media dollar because that helps make sense of the time spent and consumer influence strategy. Follow the money trail. If you don't want to believe the research, money doesn't lie. Take a look at this spend. This is how your company and all of their competition allocate their media dollar. They're following the same philosophy. Time spent and consumer influence equal media allocation. That's the simple strategy we take down to the dealer. Powerful research, powerful message from Brad. Thank you very much. Let's toss it right over to the service desk for some final thoughts from Jim and John. Uh, my, my head is just loaded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't know what to do with all this information. Just by way of reminder, uh, in, in a very few minutes, you're going to be able to go to our, our uh, link. You're going to be able to pop in the password that your sales manager has. You're going to get all this information divided out by essential. But 
I don't want to resell the whole program, Jim, but final thoughts? What do we need to, what do we need to close with? I, I stood here. Uh, I met Pat Norris uh, 10 years ago on a sales call. I called on him when he owned his six dealerships. Um, he sold the stores, and uh, after he realized he was never going to be a great golfer, we got him to come and work for us about six years ago. And uh, I was thinking about how much the car business has changed in that six years and how uh, everything we talked about in this conference that we talked about in this conference six years ago was stuff that we were just beginning to start to understand uh, and what's going to happen over the next six years. And what that says to me is that you can't have a relationship just with the agency. You've got to have a relationship with the client where these decisions are being made. And I hope that all of us take that away from this conference. And here with some final thoughts is uh, the guy who's done so much work to put this together. What a great job, uh, Tom Ray. Well, it's been an eye-opening year over here. And once we decided to refocus this year's event on automotive, we've really been uh, locked in and uncovering trends and keeping up to date with what the dealers are thinking. It started for me back in January at the Automotive Internet Battle Plan. I went in stealth just to listen to what the dealers were discussing and what their experts were telling them. I walked out in fear mode. Nobody is telling our story. Today, dealers are the most sophisticated buyers you'll encounter. They're digitally savvy and highly opinionated, but they're bombarded with data, reports, and expert opinions, and they're pretty skeptical about everything. The best thing you can do is match up their Google Analytics with your campaign and prove you are driving site traffic. And digital is no longer the differentiator, they're all doing it. You have to be category intelligent. You better be reading automotive news, you better be visiting dealer.com to stay current. And if you only think of your dealer client in terms of a media buy, you've already lost. If all you do is show up with pizza to ask, how are things going this month? You're what dealers call a luncher, a time waster no value. Bring your management. Imagine your general manager asking the owner of your biggest dealership, how can we lever leverage our assets to help you sell more cars? And they still want ideas. We've presented some great ones today. My favorite quote in all the hours of interviews and preparation came from Chris Herman, Herman Advertising, 70 dealers nationwide, where he said, anytime we've run into problems driving results for our clients, it's because we've taken our eye off the ball of stimulating the marketplace. You still need television to stimulate the marketplace. Now, ironically, I spent time this past weekend with one of the most respected digital marketers in the country, Jay Baer. Jay is the author of New York Times bestsellers, Utility. His latest book is Hug Your Haters. You'll find Jay uh, keynoting all the major digital marketing conferences. Jay shared a comment with me that I just had to capture. Here's New York Times bestselling author, Jay Baer. Hey, it's Jay Baer, founder of Convince and Convert New York Times, a best-selling author and digital strategy consultant to some of the world's largest brands. People talk all the time about search and local search, and how important it is, and it is important. But here's a key truth. Google, no search engine, can create demand. It can only fulfill demand that already exists. Here's, here's what nobody has ever done in history. Nobody ever goes to Google and says, I don't know, just surprise me. People search for things that they're already interested in. So yes, digital is important, search is important, but traditional is equally if not more important because something has to create the demand that people search for. Google cannot create demand, no search engine can. The dealer still has to stimulate the market and that's where you can help. Be sure to use the materials we're providing for you. We've organized all the downloads by our five essentials so you can use the interview clips and other materials in your future presentations. Look, it isn't going to get easier next year. We're going to have to earn our seat at the table every month. The way to win is to be the best prepared, best educated, best results driven local partner your dealer will see. That's what will help you recapture your dealer dollars in 2018. Thanks for joining us.